Hi Survivors! Welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and those of you who are watching live have seen that I have no idea what I'm doing anymore after two weeks on vacation. Uh, huge thanks to Jeff Salt for taking over the hosting duties for the past couple of weeks. He did a great job, uh, but I'm excited to be back to talk to you guys because we are right on the cusp of the Bounty Broker update coming out. We can't say exactly when it's coming out because we're not even exactly sure, but we are very, very close. Uh, and so we've actually gotten permission to go over uh, the patch notes for the Bounty Broker update. So we're, get, we're gonna not just reveal the Bounty Broker and the new critical response pack, but also all the other fixes and changes that are going in at the same time. So uh, I will not be doing that alone. We've also got Brant Fitzgerald here. He's uh, driving the game. Hello. And uh, let's see, let's actually see that game that he's playing. Look at that. That is State of Decay 2. You all know this. <laughs> You're all familiar with State of Decay 2. Uh, so let's jump right in. Actually, uh, I'll give you a preview first. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of things today. We're going to be talking about the patch notes. Uh, around 2.45 uh, Pacific time, we're going to be doing a giveaway. We'll, we'll uh, be asking a trivia question, and people who answer it correctly are going to get one of these State of Decay 2 Heartland lanyards. Uh, we'll give away three of these to uh, some, some random, lucky, uh, successful answerers of the question. And we're also going to be revealing the uh, brief little trailer uh, at the very end of the uh, of the stream. We're going to be showing the trailer for uh, the Bounty Broker update, so that's going to be fun. So there's a lot going on. So let's first off. It's a great trailer. It is. It is really. It is actually one of my favorite things that uh, that Alan has ever made for us. It makes it look <laughs> like we're a, a real company. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, so, oh, we're also going to be doing uh, the return of Community Spotlight. While we're waiting for the, uh, the winners of the, uh, of the lanyard uh, to be tabulated, we'll go through some Community Spotlight videos. We haven't done those for a couple of weeks, and so we wanted to catch up with that. But right now, though, let's talk about what is in the Bounty Broker update. So yes. for those of you who haven't been watching the past, uh, I guess, who weren't at the last stream, uh, we should tell you what the Bounty Broker is. So actually, are you anywhere near the bounty broker right now? How far um, away? Uh, you, I can. I, I. You can open the map in a second. We'll check. Yeah, let me deal with this. We should, because you've got you've got a mission to go see the bounty broker right now. So oh. Where? Where? Okay, so you are in I, Drucker, so you got to get up I'm, onto the plateau gonna, to see him. No problem. Make your way there slowly. And uh, anyway, so the Bounty Broker is basically, uh, when we released the World War II weapons, uh, you know, we, it was a big pile of weapons that a lot of people were excited about, but there wasn't a clear way to go and find them. People had to go and loot, they had to wait for a random trader to show up, and we realized if we want to keep adding content to the game, if we want to keep adding weapons and eventually, you know, other kinds of, you know, new items and tools and things like that to the game, we need to have a really coherent way for players who've been playing the game for a long time to go and know exactly where to get the new stuff. That's right. Get your stuff. So uh, we added this character called the Bounty Broker, who is in every map, uh, at least he was in the three okay. core maps, and uh, you can just go find him, he's at the same place every time, and he offers these little uh, bounties, these, these little missions to go and, uh, you know, right now it's all zombie killing missions, and we're going to keep branching it out and, and, and expand the range of different things you can do, uh, but you do stuff for him, and you come back, he gives you a free gun, and then from then on, you can buy that gun from him um, again and again, and you can outfit your whole community with him if you want. new gun. A new gun, yeah, exactly. It's not a gun you've had before. These are brand new guns uh, from you know from a new list. So uh, so that's what the bounty broker is. So that's actually kind of the flagship feature uh, of this update. So we'll we'll go check him out uh, during the stream, and whenever Brant gets there, we can we can sort of show it to I'll, you firsthand. I'll go, oh, whoa. I'll go over there right now. Because it, it's not an emergency uh, because I mean a lot of the folks in here they've already seen him. They were here last week when we debuted him. Uh, the other thing, the other big flagship thing that we're showing off. Uh, is the critical response weapons pack, which is the first big set of weapons that he is he is selling. So uh, that oh, includes, it. it's a bunch of weapons that are meant to sort of commemorate, you know, uh, police and firefighters in the wake of the zombie apocalypse. Uh, some people who, you know, I think you're, that- Your first responders. Yeah, first responders. The, like the folks in this world, I think, have a lot of, uh, you know, reverence to the people who uh, tried to save their lives very early in the apocalypse. And so I think, you know, people really value these weapons uh, to a great degree. So we've got a police sniper rifle, a 5.56 five, uh, five, millimeter police sniper rifle, an RC9 police carbine, a police uh, M590A1, that's a pump action shotgun, uh, the SWAT uh, 416, which is a 5.56 five, assault rifle, 
Uh, we've got the Ump SMG, 45 caliber submachine gun. Uh, the MP5 SD, which is uh, a suppressed MP5. Uh, the Backup Boss, which is a, a 9mm revolver commemorating one of our uh, favorite uh, long-term fans. Yeah. And uh, then we got a couple of G-Series pistols, a G34, a G26, they're both 9mm. Uh, then we got some melee weapons. We've got the high angle rescue hatchet, which is a it's a bladed weapon, and then a few different uh, riot clubs and nightsticks uh, from military and police backgrounds. And then last, we've got a couple of close combat weapons. We got a police knife and a rescue knife that's got it looks like a kind of a pry bar. Is yeah. that what it is? So that's the list of weapons. Uh, if you want to see more details on those weapons, uh, look two streams back on YouTube. Uh, Dan Mode ran through the entire list and uh, and showed you a lot of those weapons in action. We should play the trailer twice. We should play it now and play it again. <laughs> I mean, we, we easily could. It's so good. I do kind of like holding it off, though, so people have to kind of stick around if they want to see it. Um, so those are the two big things, and we've already talked about those. So I, hopefully I got through those quick enough, because I think a lot of you here are waiting to hear about something new. Actually, I should be monitoring. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so uh, Medical Pizza had a question. Can you still find these new guns randomly? And the answer to that is no. No. Yeah, the Bounty Broker is the only way. Uh, for Especially for this pack, we, uh, in talking about um, the new, how we're delivering the new weapons, we needed to make sure that our delivery system was, was up and running. Um, and so we wanted all of them in this pack to be bounty only. But that being said, I know people, yeah. some people hate that, but um, <laughs> that being said, uh, we have also decided to make, um, where appropriate, um, some of the new guns uh, available in, in Gen Pop. Um, sorry, in the regular, <laughs> in the regular loot tables, we call it Gen Pop. So yeah, so I think right now there's there's, there's kind of an issue where you know if we if we give if we put a weapon um, on the bounty broker, we actually uh, it, it has to be locked all of the time if you find it in other other circumstances. So like if somebody in multiplayer comes and brings you a gun that's a bounty broker gun and you haven't unlocked that gun, you can't use that gun until you've uh, until you've completed the bounty. Right. And so it makes that that creates some challenges for us uh, if we if we wanted to try to put something in both the loot tables and in on the bounty brokers list. Yeah. But uh, so so one thing we've also done is the World Shall War II weapons. Oh look, there he is. There's Cash. Cash Beaumont. Cash Beaumont. So uh, yeah, so he's there. So we can actually probably pick up a couple of bounties Howdy, to work Cash. on. Cash, how you doing? So. We love this guy. Uh, so we didn't actually expect him to be this cool. Uh, uh, Scott, Scott Alba, our uh, our character artist, he he basically came up with a look for this character. He's got he, this is not the only suit that he wears. He's actually got several different suits, and uh, he looks pretty amazing. So okay, so we got a bounties available for. It looks like wow, we've got fifteen there's, weapons there's, in this. There's thing. some suit, yeah. Th okay, so also. Don't expect this many weapons in every in <laughs> yeah. every new pack. This is the first drop. Uh, they'll probably get a little bit smaller in the future, but we're going to keep adding uh, to this list. We've already got plans to introduce more of these over the next you know coming months. So, so I'll definitely activate that because I'll do that before the end. Um, Close and combat bloaters with pistols specifically. Yeah, and then um, I'm gonna my long running. All right, thanks, Cash. So you can see the upper right-hand corner of the screen. We got the active bounties. But again, you guys, you know, if you've been you watching the stream regularly, you've seen all this stuff. So let's get on to the stuff that is brand new. Yep. Uh, so let's start with the general list. Okay, so we've got this categorized out. First, here are some of our general fixes. So this one's a community request. We significantly improved load times across the board, particularly on the Xbox, significantly reducing the time it takes to get into the game or into a new map. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, you don't, lo you don't uh, look at load screens very much in our game because it's open world and we're constantly streaming in the map, but that be very beginning of the game where you, you, know, you try to get into the main menu and then you try to get into the game, that was taking a very, very long time, and we've significantly reduced that time. I mean, it's still, there's still a loading screen, of course. You can't get there instantly, but... Yeah, every game has loading screens. But it is significantly lower than it was before, and, and so hopefully that'll make a, a, a difference to folks who are you know, starting up the game. And not only that, uh, but we've also significantly reduced the footprint of the game on the hard drive. But wait, there's more. Yes. Uh, so 
so right now, so people, uh, whenever people download an update, you know, they, they talk about how, you know, the, the, they, how much space do I need in my hard drive? How big of an update is this going to be? So the, this, this update that we're, uh, that we're issuing right now, when you download it, the download size is going to be just as big as it's always been. In fact, it might even be a little bit bigger than our past, um, our past downloads. But once you download it, it's actually going to shrink the game on your hard drive, and you're going to have more hard drive space uh, left over after it's installed. And then once we've got the smaller game in place, future updates, the download sizes are also going to be smaller. Um, so, so hopefully, you know, every time we issue an update, people talk about the fact that you know, with their with, with whatever limitations that they have on their internet access and stuff, it can be really inconvenient. And you know, pe a lot of people, you know, they have to kind of maintain a, a rotating roster of games on their hard drive because they all take up so much space. Uh, so we're hoping we can reduce some of that a little bit. Um, and so you guys have have uh, Henry, our, our product director, to thank for that. He he, you know, he picked up on the problem. He noticed it. And he made and and he got it fixed and. Uh, so please, you know, I'll send him a lot of thank yous because I'm really thrilled not to have to wait so long uh, to get into the game when I'm testing. Them. And then on top of that, whenever you're done with these zombies, uh, let's open up the settings menu. In fact, I think I think we might actually be able to pause the game uh, um, right now. I'll just run. I'll just run someplace where I can. Ouch! Be hurt as I get blood plague. Uh, Scarproof, while you're getting there, Scarproof asks, what about multiplayer load times? This is all load times. Um, and so whenever someone in multiplayer is uh, loading up the map in order to, to, to join somebody else's game, that will be quicker too. And it actually might, uh, we're hoping that it might actually reduce some of the cases where people were, were failing to connect because uh, they were just timing out because it was taking so long for them to load. It, in cases where that was the problem, hopefully we've, re we've reduced some of those. So, okay, so let's have a look at the settings menu. If it, I should make our faces go away so that you know, people don't vomit and also so they can see what's going on. Uh, so do look at the bottom there. We got help and support. This is a new section. And basically, if you wanted it to be more convenient uh, to get to support.statedecay.com, which is our favorite place in the entire world, uh, this is a place you can get there quicker. If you're on PC, uh, I think you can just link right there through whatever browser gets opened up. Um, if you're on console, this will open a browser on your console, which is not the best user experience, but that's why we included a QR code, so that if you're sitting there at your console and you want to get to support.statedecay.com fast to report a bug or to get help with a technical issue, um, you can scan that QR code, it'll send you to the website and, and get you all queued up to, uh, to report things. So we really wanted to make sure that people have the easiest possible access to this stuff because, you know, you guys have stayed with us through um, a lot of issues uh, that you've right. had to deal with, and we, we really want you to be able to have the best experience trying to, Bucket yeah, tr trying to get that stuff resolved. So that's the general section. Let's go talk about gameplay. So, okay, you now use the direction of your camera instead of your characters facing to choose which interactive object to target. So. Uh, Maybe if you find a car, are we near a car anywhere? That's probably one of the best places to, to show this off. So it's the car that is the hardest to show this on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. But we might still be able to make it work though. Oh, um, Buffalo Butt Cheeks. <laughs> Hold on. Buffalo Butt Cheeks. Stop the stream. Uh, <laughs> asks. Um, does bounty progress reset per difficulty? Dread mode, nightmare mode? Uh, no, it doesn't reset. Uh, you can, uh, it, it's just account wide. In fact, even if you switch from one community to another, anything you've unlocked stays unlocked. Uh, so we just, we didn't want you to have to feel like this is a, a grind that you have to go through again and again every time you play a community. Once you've uh, completed a bounty, you've completed that bounty. And now the, the, the weapon is available to you and all your future communities, um, you know, for, for influence instead of, yeah. Okay, so normally you have to like nudge your character around in really awkward ways in order to decide what you're pointing at. But now if you just rotate the camera and not the character. See? You can just aim at the gas or it's... aim at the door. That's right. Instead of having to awkwardly point, uh, like, like poke your character move around. Move your character around like this. Now you can just, oh, I want to fill it up. So. Or drive or ride. I was very nervous about approving this change because changing anything about the controls is dangerous. You know, like because you guys you've gotten very used to the way that the controls work, and if there's something about this new method that bothers you, I was very nervous about about changing it up on you. So there's actually a new thing in the settings menu. Actually, let's open up the settings menu again real quick just to look at it. Okay. Um, so you open up settings and you go to uh, gameplay. I think it's the top one, gameplay. Uh, yeah, so use camera to target interactions. Right now it's set to always. You can set it to never if you want to. 
And uh, yeah, so we, we, we had another couple options in there that, there that ended up not being very necessary. Uh, but yeah, so basically you decide if you want to leave this the way it is, by default we're changing it. But if you want to go back to the way it was before, you're free to, it's right there on the settings menu. Ja Ja, the answer to your question is like, Impending. I yeah, and it is like <laughs> we haven't announced a date for the patch, but it it is like very very soon, and uh, it's and we're only being cagey because we want to really make sure that we fully QA'd this thing and, and, and tested it thoroughly before we put it out. And so really, the moment it's ready, it's going to go out. Uh, and so just we can't tell you exactly how long uh, you're going to wait for that, but uh, it's very very soon. I, I would not expect it to to take very long. See here. Oh, um, awesome Twitch dude. Since we were talking about the guns a second ago, wants to know uh, if the ump goes full auto. Yes. Brant believes so. Um, so there's another interesting thing you can do with, with the settings menu. Uh, I don't know if we want to run them through this particular thing, but basically uh, we've added some new key binding options. So go over to the uh, controls. Yeah, controls, and go down to um, remap controls. Do do do. And uh, yeah, so if you see, look, we got dodge slash crouch on B right now. But there's two new options, crouch and dodge without each other. And so if you, I've gotten really tired of the fact that dodge and crouch are on the same button, you can manipulate your key bindings to actually split them up now and put them on two different buttons. I think, so I think the most popular so far has been to put the emote uh, oh, so, on one of those, right? Uh, so we've we've talked about uh, swapping out emotes. Actually, the, the the thing that we've been doing lately is uh, is we'll go down to the zoom uh, zoom, uh, zoom when you're uh, when you're aiming your gun. Oh, that's right, clicking. That's yeah, right. yeah. We, so we'll, we'll unbind that and then assign crouch to that and then dodge to B. So you can dodge without ever crouching and crouch without ever dodging. So this is entirely optional. We didn't want to change the default control scheme on people for yeah. something that's as critical as crouching and dodging. But if you've been driven crazy by the fact, the fact that crouch and dodge are on the same button, you can now decide. The controller's so packed, you have to give something up in yeah. order to split them up. Uh, that's kind of why they're on the same button is because we're just out of buttons. But now if you want to devise a control scheme that incorporates two separate buttons for crouch and dodge, you can do that if you want to. So yeah. more customization for you. Uh, we're not gonna foist anything on you there, but if you can find a way that makes you happy to make that work, great. It's easier on a mouse and keyboard. If you play on a, on a PC, uh, what we've been doing is sticking stealth on G and dodge on C, and, and that works well uh, for a lot of us here. Um, so, you know, but it's up to you. You guys figure out what feels good to you. We're not, I'm not gonna tell you, you know. The, the whole point of this is for you to have more customization options and not for us to mandate how it works. Uh, let's see here. Keeping up with... Oh, hey, console freaks, uh, you, you gotta hold up for just a second. We'll get, we'll get to your subject that you're talking about in just a minute. Another couple of gameplay changes. Um, using items like painkillers, grenades, and mines is now much more reliable and responsive while moving and dodging. So it used to be while you're moving and dodging around, uh, there were a lot of things that just wouldn't work. You couldn't use a painkiller, you couldn't drop a mine, you couldn't, you know, things that you would feel like you might be able to do would just fail with no explanation. Um, and so we've fixed a lot of those cases now. So uh, I'd love for you know, next time you play the game, run around, throwing grenades while dodging or using painkillers while dodging. Try a lot of those combinations. I think you'll find that they're, they're a lot more responsive now than they used to be. Um, another thing that we've uh, improved about dodging is dodging while you're tired or injured um, is now a lot quicker and there's less of a sort of a hold up at the end. It used to be, you know, when, when you would dodge while you were tired or, or injured or sick, uh, you would dodge and then you'd be kind of stuck, unable to do anything else at the end of the dodge. You'd be kind of like free meat for zombies. Um, we've, <laughs> we've reduced that a lot. So, so that dodge is actually more useful now when you're tired. So free meat for zombies. People would kind of get into these frustrating loops where it's like once I'm injured and once I'm tired, that's it. I'm just going to get murdered by these zombies and I just have to slowly watch myself die. And so now we've kind of, we've mitigated that. So you have more control and you can, you know, if you're good, you can get out of it a little bit, you know, more easily. Uh, so Buffalo Bit Cheeks, again, has a question. Uh, I always had trouble picking up something next to an NPC, like an item. Would the new camera change fix that problem? Yeah, that's the intent. Is that if, if you've got two things that are very close to each other and you're trying to decide what to interact with, Trying to use your character's facing to determine that was, was always creating all these very frustrating situations where you knew you could sort of do it, but you had to try like nine times to make it happen. Yeah. Now with the camera, you know, just you aim the middle of the screen at the thing you want to interact with, and, uh, and it's much more intuitive how it works. And you can kind of 
get to, you know, you can solve the problem a lot faster and more intuitively than you could before. So yeah, that's exactly what it's for. <laughs> um, Court 88 too wants to know, are the flying cars being passed? Uh, we are looking into how to fix those, and there there are a couple of specific cases of cars flying into the air um, that, that we have improved, but we didn't put that in the patch notes because we haven't fixed all of the cases. We know that there are definitely cases where you can still get cars to fly into the air. So we haven't announced anything in the patch notes uh, for that, and we're still, we're still working on that problem. Yeah, we haven't forgotten about it. Fixing physics is uh, a very large process. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so that's the gameplay section. Let's talk about inventory. Um, okay, so do you have any stacks of things in your inventory right now? After you're done dealing with After this I'm monster. After I'm done getting wailed on by this zombie? Hold on. No, Brant. Open your inventory right now. Okay, yeah, so go over the uh, the, the, the painkillers or the parts or something like that. So you'll notice there's a new option called Drop One uh, down there at the bottom. That didn't used to be there before. If you hold the Y button, you can just drop one painkiller instead of dropping your entire stack. That is so huge when you're playing multiplayer. Yeah, so we, we got a lot of, uh, you know, this, this is officially a community yeah, request. We got a lot of requests from people asking, you know, when I'm trying to share painkillers with my friend, I don't necessarily want to drop all six of the painkillers in the stack on my best character who's yeah. got all the pocket space in the world. Like, I want to just give them one and keep the rest of mine and not have it be weird and awkward. I'd have to, like, you know, they use one and then they give me the stack back Please and then I pick it, it up again. Yeah, so now you can just drop one if that's what you want to do. And uh, no, no problems about it at all. Um, let's see here. Awesome Twitch dude wants to know if Cash Beaumont is immune to bloater gas. I think that's an experiment that you should do and report back to the rest of us. Yeah. Um, so that's there. Uh, we also we also added some safeguards against modded um, what I've been calling glitter bombs, which is a, a, a modder sets up a weapon so that when it is salvaged, it drops a million parts into somebody's inventory, then they give somebody the, they give somebody the weapon, and then when the person salvages it, they get so many parts in their supply locker that they can't even use their supply locker anymore. It's kind of ridiculous. So we put some safeguards in against that. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what they are, because I don't wanna tell the modders what they are. What I'd like is for <laughs> us to put, uh, like, anybody who does that to somebody, it should mail me their address, and I would like to go have a talk with them. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so that should be there. So I think a few of you might have experienced that, and hopefully you won't experience it again. Unfortunately, this d does not clean up the parts from your supply locker, and I apologize about that. But uh, it should make it better in the future. Um, oh, you can unload weapons that you get from supply drops. Like, if you open up the supply drop, you can unload them from there. That was just, it was one of many, uh, you know, we, we added a whole bunch of inventory uh, control options uh, in, in a previous patch, and that was just one that we missed, so we added it in here. Um, oh, and the game also uh, it no longer claims that you can unload weapons that are in a trader's inventory uh, because you couldn't <laughs> do it. It was saying you could do it, but you couldn't do it because that's really rude to just like you know walk up to a gun store and just take all of the the bullets, take all the bullets out of the that guns. That shouldn't be in the gun, anyways. Exactly. But, if, that's, you know, if they're a responsible the merchant, it is the apocalypse. So yeah, because seriously, that was actually. Um, did you ever watch the Rover? No. That was probably. One of the weirdest moments in that, it, it, there, there's a scene in that in, in that movie, but I guess I won't give you all the details. There's a scene in that movie where uh, this conversation is relevant. You're like, why did you have bullets in that gun? Whatever, anyway, so that's the inventory. Oh man, we're coming up against a, uh, a really interesting addition here. How much influence do you have? I got 603. Perfect, can you open your radio menu? Let me uh, make sure nobody's gonna jump me while I'm doing that. Yeah, so this one is labeled, not just community request, this one is labeled frequent and emphatic community request. So, uh, yeah, let's get to a fairly safe place. I had to look up emphatic. Oh, man. I didn't. I'm I, an English major. I'm, <laughs> I was say, I'm expanding the vocabulary of English majors. That makes me feel special. Yeah, I'm going to run to the top of this. The bathroom? And, no, 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 not the bathroom. Unless... Unless this is where you do your business. <laughs> so people are saying, please be what I hope it is. Okay, so open up the radio. And go down to find resources slash people. What's gonna happen? <laughs> so go down to the very bottom. Find what? military survivors! What? What? <laughs> High five. High five. So, here's what we've got. Um, we have added, ba so we basically have added enough character models that have military outfits on that we could put them back 
in all of the places where they were. So you know that that mission where you've got the enclave full of military folks and they've got the one disaffected soldier who's thinking of leaving, that enclave now wears military outfits again. But not only that, because I know a lot of you have been very frustrated and waiting for a long time. So now, actually about one in 30 enclaves you meet out in the world will have military outfits on. Um, so you can run into them fairly frequently. Um, and on top of that, uh, we've got this new option to, if you really, really want to make sure that you get military survivors into your community as fast as possible, you can now uh, summon them uh, to, to appear. It, it costs twice as much influence because they tend to be more combat experience than other survivors, so they're worth a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so you still have to, you know, spend the time recruiting them like you would any other enclave, but you can make sure that they arrive in your community. Now, I don't know how long we're gonna leave that there. It's mostly there to just sort of let you, who, those of you who have been waiting patiently for so long to get military survivors, it's mostly to like let you blow off some steam and get the <laughs> characters that you want. I don't know if it's gonna actually stay in the radio menu forever, but for right now, definitely use it. Take advantage of it, grab some military enclaves, recruit them, and uh, you can fill out your community with people wearing army uniforms. And, oh, on top of that, too, uh, because now there's gonna be a lot more military characters in the game, I felt like we didn't have enough military traits uh, to, to support all of them. You'd start seeing a lot of repetition, so we've also added a bunch of new military traits um, to the game, uh, which, you know, they, they reflect a lot of different backgrounds from, you know, people who, uh, you know, work, work in the motor pool uh, to, you know, people from, you know, different branches of the service, that kind of thing. So there, there's a lot of different ones. There's even a few that are posers who dress in military outfits but actually have no military background at all. So... Let's see, I'm gonna stand over here and go, do I really want to drive, Jeffrey? Uh, I don't think oh, so. look! You've got another option. I'm gonna scooch over. Oh, oh God. Man. Okay, come on. This one's really tiny, huh? So. Oh wait, do you oh, have wait. fuel? You don't even have fuel, I, that's why it's not showing up. No, I have some. I yeah. think I accidentally reset the settings. Oh, did you turn it off? Is it gameplay? I think it was gameplay. Always. No, no it's, it's, it's always, yeah, I think we're just having trouble. There, there it, is. it is. Okay, so still, you know, it's still trying to find everything in the world, so, so sometimes it doesn't work exactly the way you hope, but it should still be a it, lot it, easier than it was before. Take my word for it, it's much easier. You'll get to play it very soon, and you'll agree. Oh, uh, so Football Andy asks, why did we choose the army uh, branch uh, instead of any other branch? Really, the, I think the idea was just the particular area where you are and the particular base where the tutorial starts out was, was run by, uh, by people from the army. And so, so, we, so we keep referring to the army because those initial characters uh, were from the army. That doesn't mean the other branches weren't involved um, in, 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 in you know, the goings on of our story. We don't we... have any biases against anybody except the Marine Corps. <laughs> I'm so just kidding. It was specifically Marines that were asking that. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. But, uh, but yeah, so, so there wasn't any particular reason. It was just we picked, we picked one that seemed appropriate. Uh, and we just, you know, uh, we, 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 in general, actually, we, we tried very hard to get specific rather than general with a lot of choices that we make um, in, in, about characters and their identities and stuff like that. We don't, you know, when we're working with cultural backgrounds and things and, and, and name lists, we make sure that we don't just sort of uh, combine, you know, very dis disparate groups of people into one big lump sum and say, oh, wait, everyone who, who shares this trait in common is like this. You know, if we were gonna make a specific character, we just get very specific about where they're from and what their background is. So instead of just saying, they're from the military, we usually pick a branch and we say army. Because uh, it makes the characters feel more real and it, and it avoids us, you know, uh, at least it, we try to avoid um, you know, making mistakes and getting things wrong about, you know, subcultures and groups and things that we don't belong to. Well, and, and you know, the only experience... Like combining things that don't match. The only military experience I have is with the Army. And so okay, it was much easier to try and come up with references there than it was the Marine Corps. Yep, Brand um, is my first line of defense for checking a lot of this stuff's veracity. So, you know, and, and, and he doesn't pretend to know everything either. Well, so we try the, to check a lot of these things. The last thing in the entire universe I want is for some Marines to be mad at me. <laughs> okay, let's be honest here. Uh, so King Games wants to know if the military traits are listed in the patch notes. Uh, they are not right now, and I think they would, there's so many of them, they would make the patch notes yeah, very long. Cool. So that's probably not necessary, but I think if you if you if you look around, I mean, we kind of want some of the traits to be surprises anyway. So you know, some of my favorite things was watching people see a new trait for the first time they haven't seen before and being pleasantly surprised. I think some of them that we did are are a little bit funny at least, and so I kind of don't want to spoil them for you. Uh, 
let's see here. This dump is clear. So Ian M. Walker wants to know, will there eventually be an explanation as to where Cash Beaumont came from? Why he's offering these quests and things? So uh, that's our hope. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're not just, um, you know, just throwing him in there to be a nobody character. Right now, he's not saying very much. Right now, he's very cagey uh, about who he is and where he comes from. But we, we do hope that we'll, we'll have opportunities to flesh him out in the future. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's intentional. Um, oh, hey, another thing that you should do uh, we've got enough prestige. I think you should recruit a red talent person. Oh, dude. I just took this outpost. No, 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 no. Prestige, prestige. Oh, prestige. Prestige. You, yeah, you, you should totally recruit a red talent person. Okay. So I go... So we'll we'll come back to the thing I was about to say Wait once you've... Uh, radio. Yeah, go down to daybreak. Daybreak up, 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 up there. And then... Oh, wait. We don't have enough. Oh, we have just barely not enough. Crap. I thought we had enough. You're right. You know, it's... Never mind. No! I'll just tell you what we did then, instead of showing you. Uh, so we re-rebalanced the Red Talon contractors and soldiers uh, as follows. They are no longer irritated at everyone all the time. Um, and we also reduced the downsides that were associated with combat medic, pioneer, squad cook, demolitionist, and facilities engineer backgrounds. So that's most of the backgrounds. Um, and so basically, you know, we we might have overcorrected uh, when we when we nerfed the Red Talon soldiers uh, a few months back, and so we're pulling it back not all the way, but we're pulling it back a little bit. And we knew that specifically people were particularly unhappy with the fact that they were starting fights all the time. Um, they felt like you know. Character-wise, they should be more disciplined. They should be able to control themselves. Uh, and so, you know, so we, we, we've gone with that. So now you're getting a higher caliber of Red Talon recruit uh, who's not just a jerk all the time. And hopefully that'll make some, <laughs> some folks pretty happy. Um, Gooniverse asks, can you refuse military survivors for a refund like you can Red Talon? Uh, so the military survivors, when they, they're not using, uh, the, their recruit mission is not like the Red Talon recruit mission where there's just one particular person who comes, you decide if you like them, and you can dismiss them. Uh, the military survivors, when they show up, they show up as a full enclave of three characters, just like if you had called for other random survivors. Uh, so it's not a case of like, you get one character and you decide if, you know, if the, the, the currency you spent on them is worth it and then you dismiss them. It's more like you've got some new friends who moved over next door, you've still got to spend the time uh, buttering them up by doing missions for them, recruiting them the normal way. Uh, that's the kind of, of, of enclave that you get. So, uh, so no, there's no refund, but it's also, it's only 300 influence, which, you know, is, is small, is, it's less than most of your better outposts. Uh, so hopefully that's, it's not gonna be so much currency place. that you're too worried about, you know, about losing it. Uh, SXO Six Maze One wants to know: Will the old Red Talon soldiers change too? Yes. What we did was we changed the traits that were already on the soldiers. Uh, so we didn't create a new profile of soldier that has new traits. We just changed the traits. So you should. So all of your existing Red Talon uh, uh, soldiers and contractors, uh, they should all, they should all get get the benefits of this change without you having to do anything at all. Um, another change to characters, uh, killing zombies with explosives now grants a small amount of experience uh, towards the chemistry, munitions, outlaw chemistry, and bomb making skills. Uh, so now if you go around, if you've got a character who's good at munitions and you, and you run around with grenades and blow up zombies, uh, you'll actually be gaining experience towards, uh, towards that skill. And uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where uh, it, it just seems like it makes sense. And we actually already had the functionality in the game to do it. It just wasn't hooked up. So I, when I noticed that the functionality was in there, I was like, uh, can I just hook this up? I think I will. So we just hooked it up. And uh, I'd love to do, you know, in the future, maybe we'll get a chance to do the similar things with other skills, give you more opportunities, more means of, uh, of earning XP. But no promises there. This one was easy. And so that's why we did it. Uh, let's see here. So uh, we're getting some questions about whether or not the military outfits are new. Um, there, there are some variants between them. Like some characters have slightly different military outfits than others. Yeah, those of you who are looking for like desert camo or something, straight off the press, out of the you know, like right off the training ground kind of camo setups, you're not going to get it. Yeah. So, so what they are dressed in camouflage. They're dressed in you know, kind of you know, professional looking gear. It's not formally the actual uniforms of the U.S. Army. And, uh, and they're also, right now, they're all still you know, in, in, in the green outfits. There's no desert camo, no urban camo, no arctic camo, uh, or anything like that. It's, it, it's all uh, you know, along the same lines that we had. Because we need, you know, basically the goal was to take the outfits that we already had in the game and removed and put them back uh, a little fancier than before. And so that's, so that's what we've done. So 
Um, so it's very similar to the outfits you've seen in the past. It's very similar to the outfit on the character that you have in the tutorial. But there are there are some variants to it. There like some characters look one way, some look another way. Uh, there's there's enough variety that I think it's interesting. But uh, but yeah. Let's see here. Oh, Asapor wanted to know how much influence was it to, to, to spawn one of those enclaves. It was 300 influence. Uh, 150 is usually the amount that it takes to get a, uh, uh, a group of randos into the game. Okay, and so I, getting got, the military I, can folks. Go, I can go talk to them now. I was waiting for that mission to pop up. Okay, cool. So yeah, Eugene and the Grunts <laughs> have just come to town. So uh, you, know, they've got, you can tell that they're a military outfit because uh, they call themselves the Grunts. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of new enclave names that they can have. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, Renise Died wants to know, uh, will the other missions stack to the side like the bounty and the military missions are stacking right now? Yes. So, basically, um, we figured that uh, the bounties, uh, the, the size of that of that piece of, of HUD changes a lot less frequently than the mission does, and so we put it on top. Uh, so that it, it just sits there. The, when you've got active bounties, they sit there solid for a long time. Uh, but then your mission, which which changes a lot more frequently, is the thing that's on the bottom that might be you know changing in size. So so yeah. So that's how they stack. Uh, you get your bounties on top and your missions down below. And also, if you decide to unpin your mission and just have no mission available at all, the bounties stay exactly where they are. They don't move. So we 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 consider putting the bounties below them, but then the bounties would just be sliding up and down all the time as missions changed, and that seemed like it would look weird. Uh, so we went with so we went with this direction. Um, Amarga Vita wants to know: Is there a limit to how many military enclaves you can have at once? Um, You're gonna tell us probably. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the same limits that we've always had. You know, the, there's always a limit to how many enclaves can be on the map, um, and nothing about that has changed. So uh, you know, if you were in the habit of trying to just add a, a million enclaves to the map, uh, this will follow the same limitations that you faced before. Uh, I'm not gonna go that way. Uh, okay. Another minor fix to the characters. Uh, survivors with the last name Castellano no longer show up with a blank nickname. Uh, this was just an error on my part. Um, basically, I've got a, a system that I can use where I can click any name and I can add a nickname to it. And then I fill in what the nickname is. And I fill in how frequently that nickname shows up. Um, and apparently, I clicked on Castellano, clicked on the little plus button to create a new nickname, and then never filled it out. And so it had maximum weight and nothing in it. And so if you had Castellanos in your community, they had no nickname, and they would just have blank spots where the name was. And I that was weird. Place. Yeah, this place is cool. Uh, so that was weird. No uh, so that's not in the game anymore. I just took that out. It's not that we have an, um, an ingrained hatred towards that particular name. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're running low on time. I should, so we've got okay. some mission fixes. But I think I'm going to skip those because they're very detailed. A lot of them are in Heartland, um, and it's just lots of fixes to little places where something could go wrong in a mission. Um, and so there's, there's numerous fixes to those, and whenever the patch notes officially come out on our website, you can go and look through those and see, you know, see what's fixed. It's going to be soon. Uh, there are a couple little things that are on these lists that I can call out. Um, Heartland-specific specializations for core skills now gain experience as intended. So. Uh, those of you who played Heartland, you might notice that uh, the butchery skill, the field testing skill, the gymnastics skill, the obsession skill, the scavenging skill, and the vigilance skill would just sit there at whatever number of stars the character had when you first recruited them and would never go up. Uh, that's fixed now. So now they gain experience the way they're supposed to. Uh, and that was just an oversight. There's a little space in the data where I had to list the right thing and I just forgot. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. But now those characters should work the way that they should. Yay! Um... Oh, and we also, uh, this is probably, yeah, one of the ones that got called out personally to me, so I wanted to mention it. Uh, we fixed some voodoo that was causing Reba, Diana, and Chavez to reset their timelines when they died in Heartland, uh, starting over from scratch. Uh, so basically, you would get them killed, and then they would respawn again, and they would start their entire mission line over again. And that was ridiculous. And so uh, we're not doing that anymore. Now the only way they can rise from the dead is as zombies. So... That's it. And then there's a bunch of other um, Heartland missions, other mission fixes. Yeah, and all the people hating on Reba, nice knock it off. <laughs> Reba's yeah. awesome. Reba is awesome. Um, Here they are. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at these outfits these guys got on. Look, this guy's got a vest. This guy has, has not got a vest. These guys are pretty tactical, though. Yeah, they look like, look like they know what they're doing. And uh, they all start out with you know with military traits, and so you know, you'll see some of them. They'll come up with uh, with equipment that comes with their military traits. Uh, everybody here should be should actually be pretty pretty valuable recruits. 
Where's your gene? Let's uh, let's talk about achievements real quick. Okay. So uh, we fixed several achievements that the game was failing to award progress for. Uh, specifically, the legacy achievements, people were failing to get them sometimes, and achievements associated with Plague Hearts, uh, people were failing to get sometimes. Um, and also, there was a good, another couple of weird ones, like Sayonara for getting a character killed uh, wasn't, wasn't firing, and Barley and Spoiled Blueberries for killing bloaters, that one wasn't firing. Uh, and what so, is that? That's a reference to uh, Bastion. You ever played Bastion? Yes. Bastion's a great game. Uh, there is a line that the narrator says about uh, their their gas bag characters, the, those enemies that are big balls of gas, uh, that they smell like barley and spoiled blueberries okay. when, you, when you blew them up. All so right. uh, that's that's a deep cut right there. Uh, but yeah, so those those achievements should be fixed. So uh, go out, go into the world and achieve, and uh, hopefully they, they should work for you. Um, okay, four minutes before uh, it's time to do the giveaway. So uh, let me see if I can get through the last few. Um, eight months after delivering the holiday 2018 Damn. celebratory wizard van, we realized we should probably remove it. Uh, so if you notice in the radio menu, there's no wizard van in there. No! It's gone, but not forgotten. Um, I'm sure we'll find an opportunity to bring it back sometime in the future, but for right now, because it was a holiday celebration, it feels it's weird gone. for it to be there in August or July. Christmas so, in July. It's Christmas in July. Uh, so, you know, we, we decided to be true to our word and actually make it a holiday celebration and not have it be around right now. Other little minor bugs. Um, if you die of the blood plague while exiting a vehicle, you will now stand up and die uh, instead of soft locking the game, uh, which is what you used to do before. So. Stop doing that. Seems good. Yeah. Uh, we fixed an issue with AI pathing that was causing mission characters to dodge around you repeatedly while they're trying to stand where you are. So if you happen to be standing where they were scripted to go, they would just be like, dodge, 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 dodge through you. And it looked really weird. So now they're smarter, and they don't do that as much. Um, we fixed an issue where clients hey, in multiplayer dude. games would hear muffled so, audio right, forever after they died. Okay. So if they, if you're a client in a multiplayer game and you died, and then you came back as a new character, uh, you would hear muffled audio forever. Uh, so now you don't do that anymore. Um, we also fixed uh, a few graphical issues with shadowing, uh, especially with some Halo-like artifacts around characters. Uh, I don't have a good enough eye to have noticed that that was a problem, but if you did, uh, that should have gotten better now. And then finally, we just fixed lots of minor issues with like lighting and world geometry, seams and holes in the world, that kind of thing. Uh, anywhere we found stuff like that, we killed it. So that's the patch notes. Uh, so See, this- lots and lots of cool stuff. Lots of cool stuff and lots of stuff that you guys have been asking for for a really long time. That's, that's what makes it exciting for us, I think, yeah. is the fact that we know that several of these things are things that you guys have actually really been wanting for a long time. And now uh, you don't have to want it anymore because it's, it's there. Uh, I guess you still want it, but you just don't notice that you want it because anyway. Um, you know. What we're doing. I'm gonna go to the questions here. Uh, Sixo wants to know uh, any achievements for the bounty hunter. No, we didn't. We didn't any include any achievements for the bounty uh, broker right now. Uh, but that doesn't mean we won't in the future. Uh, we're planning on continuing to expand on that system, and so we need, we we'll need have some, opportunities. We need some. There's, <gasps> bounty, there's bounty complete. Look at that. We need some time to marinate on on the bounty broker too. Yeah, actually. Before we yeah, one thing you guys should get used to is that we're, we're really going to try to treat this game like a live service game, which means that a lot of the time when you get a new feature, it'll be a small feature, and what we're going to do is put the small feature in, let you guys play with it, watch what you guys do with it, learn from it, and then make the feature bigger and better yeah. over time. Um, and so that's that's the way you should think about the Bounty Broker, is that we, we didn't just sort of sit there and go dark for a really long time until we could just drop the biggest, most perfect, uh, final possible version of the Bounty Broker. Instead, so we made the small version there, of the Bounty Broker, so put him out there, and then we want to see how you guys engage with him right. and what you think of him. And yeah. then we can respond to your feedback. And Your yeah. feedback is more important than ever, actually. Yeah. Because yeah, we true. now have um, the mandate to really try and, you know, support this game in the way that you guys are hoping for. So. Yeah. Uh, Jazzman NHS asks, can you get the military people in the randomizer starty thing? Uh, no, actually. Uh, I don't think they, they do show up in there because to get that outfit on them, we actually had to um, create special enclaves and special character uh, uh, profiles, spe special character schemas that would include that outfit, whereas most characters don't. We wanted the outfit to always mean something, I mean, to be connected with some trait that explains why the character dresses that way. Uh, and so we weren't able to integrate it into the existing character schemas that we're using on the randomizer. So they're not in the randomizer. You do have to find them in the world. Um, or, you know, call call them, you know, from the radio or whatever. Diddly squat. Hmm. 
Let's see here. Oh, so uh, folks are asking, are any legacy missions fixed in the update? Uh, let me scroll down here. I think that, 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 yes, some of the fixes to missions were legacy missions. We were about to do the giveaway. Let me just, I'll do this last one here. So uh, the Builder Elbow Room mission is now better at finding applicable bases and has safeguards against getting stuck when it fails. So if you were getting hung up in the Builder mission, uh, that, that, uh, specifically because it couldn't find a base, um, that, that one should be fixed. Uh, Warlord, Weapons for All, now allows you to spare the last Enclave member without getting stuck. So, there's that. Uh, we fixed a bug that sometimes prevented uh, Warlord Personal Dead Zone from completing. And the Builder Legacy missions now automatically pinned to the HUD. So those are the fixes we made to Legacy missions. Uh, so if, that, if the Legacy mission that, uh, that you were having an issue with isn't on that list, then, uh, and, and you don't already have a ticket into support.stateofdecay.com, you know, please communicate with us about that. In fact, we've got this lovely place in the settings menu where you can go uh, to find support.stateofdecay.com and report any issues that you're having uh, that we haven't addressed yet or that, or that we haven't already gotten into a dialogue with you about addressing. Um, let's see. So okay, let's do let's do the giveaway. I'll I'll I'll, I'll glance at the uh, at more of the questions that are coming in, in a second. But we are a little bit over time to do the giveaway. So let's do the giveaway. So right now I'm holding in my hands this lanyard. Uh, this is a State of Decay 2 Heartland lanyard. So if you're a lanyard wearing type, uh, this might be something you're interested in. And we have got a trivia question for you. So the way it works is uh, answer the trivia question in your chat. Uh, we're watching Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube. And there's going to be one winner in each of those platforms. And basically, uh, uh, our, our moderators are going to check the first 10 or 12 people who get the right answer and enter them in a drawing to, uh, to see who gets the lanyard. So, and we're doing that because, you know, people have different connection speeds and stuff. We didn't want it all to be about who has the fastest internet. Uh, we wanted it to be about, you know, the lucky person who gets it. So that's how it's going to work. So here's the question. The question is, and we've talked about this on this stream and on the previous stream, uh, what is the Bounty Broker's full name? So if you've been paying attention uh, to what the Bounty Broker's full name is, put it into the chat. And, uh, or if you don't know, watch what other people put in the chat. That's and right. then try to get in there real fast. Um, you don't have to spell it exactly right. We've mostly been saying it out loud. It hasn't been in print all that often. So if you, if you misspell it a little bit, we'll, we'll be okay with that. Uh, but while we are tabulating those responses, I think uh, Brant should pause and come over here so we can do Community Spotlight. Yay, Community Spotlight. So first we're starting with uh, this lovely image, which is, oh wait, it's not from Rampage. I've got the wrong name up there, excuse me. This is from Aberdeenie. <laughs> so Aberdeenie, uh, was driving down the road and saw this thing, and uh, what did they say? They said, you know you've been playing State of Decay 2 too much, when things like this make you automatically think, that would make a perfect outpost. So it does look very secure. Uh, so thank you, Aberdeenie, for submitting that. Let's have a look at some of the other stuff. So we've got uh, from SOD to Danyo, uh, we've got this image. Uh, where, what they said was, uh, here we have Anthony, Ben, Dion, and Steve wearing a few pieces from the Decamo, Decadenim, Summer Decay, and Biker Apocalypto collection. All perfect for slaying Zeds while having a style unique to who you are. Uh, with all of these unique characters uh, who all look exactly like Rukari. Yep. Uh, so that was well, lovely. Thank you for sharing that, uh, did, SOD2 did, Daniel. Did, actually, did Rukari actually send that screenshot in? Uh, I, don't, I can see him building Is that, that his name? I don't know. So one thing I forgot to do um, was put our faces above all of the images that we're sharing. So let me see if Why I can just we do that? make that happen real fast because because uh, everyone wants to look at us. We are we are why people come, right? No, absolutely. So let's uh, see. Is this the no? Is that oh that's your camera right there? Cool. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fix this real here. Everyone just loves what this is great television right now. Everyone just watching me fix invisible things behind the scenes that no one can tell is going on. Yeah, okay, he's, great. He's making awesome. it so much better. Awesome, this is much better. Okay, so the next one, this comes from Mr. J. Uh, Mr. J? Mr. J. Uh, so Mr. J shared this video with us. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, they forgot to put on um, Yoda. So this one's on me. Like takes one look, at it, or takes one, takes one look, and he's just like, he's just gagging. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so disgusting, Mr. J. Mr. J, you smell so bad today, Mr. J. And now he's dead. 
so that was lovely. And and Mr. J is actually on kind of a uh, kind of a vomit kick right now uh -oh. because the other video that Mr. J suggested uh, is well, this. Well, hello there. How you doing? Uh, come over, being friendly, and somebody is just not even acknowledging their guest. <laughs> They're just throwing up in that toilet. So this, I like this one because it reminded me of a bug we had uh, early on in the game, where we had just started implementing uh, the system that allows characters to go and interact with objects at the base, and we hadn't set up a lot of them yet. And so really, the only one we had at the base was the toilet the you could throw up in, and we had an audio issue where uh, where you could hear them from all over the base. And so basically, any time you were at home, somebody was vomiting into yeah. your ear holes. Uh, and it was probably the worst ASMR... Uh, Straight into your ear. We've, ...we've ever had. Straight into your ear. So this next one comes from Mr. Dart, and we're not going to watch the whole thing because it Speaking is super long. Speaking of Dart, what are you doing watching this? You're on vacation, man. Go enjoy Australia. Jeez. I can't criticize him. I also watched the stream while I was on vacation. Um... Yeah, but you weren't. You think it's too late to add that uh, the spotlight for tonight's stream is shooting whilst driving? So he's he starts uh, off the video by debating no, whether well, or not it might he be. be actually, get, yeah, because it's, it's not Jeffrey who's doing it. It's already probably been done. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, so he was. Uh, I mean, so we'll his just explanation next time. of this was uh, let's see here. Who needs mounted machine guns on vehicles in state of decay when you have a mounted? We'll just make sure we kids. clip it and we put it on uh, on Twitter. So that's out your kids up there. Uh, you're, you're all peachy. This goes yes, for a long she's 19. time. So I'm She's not going to watch the whole thing. Soul. But uh, that's beautiful. And his balance is so good. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised. No, don't start that, Gift Lord. Do not start that. Some really oh, steady oh, now oh he's crap. Gone. There he goes. That's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens. So, yeah, thank you, Mr. Dart, for sharing that video. Thanks, Dart. I hope you're enjoying your, your holiday. Uh, this next one comes from Slim Merc on Twitch. Uh, this is what happens Where sometimes when... In multiplayer, uh, he refers to this as uh, no, lag life, I believe. <laughs> so he's got a friend up there who is Stuck just right in air. having a great time hovering in the sky. I mean, if I could do that. This like is also what happens when you're really, ball. really afraid of falling off uh, <laughs> tall objects. Oh, that's true. It's like, it's like if you're like Wiley Coyote. Like, <laughs> yep. you go off the edge and you're like. <gasps> so that was it. Thank you for sharing that. Totally meant to do that, by the way. Uh, and then we've got, this is from... Uh, same color blood. So, yeah, it was like, I've had this game from day one and I never saw this. <laughs> they saw uh, Zombies on Chains for the first oh. time. And so I, I like that because, yeah, because they're only in one enclave, uh. one obscure enclave. And if you never get them, you never get them. And so it's really easy to go a long time without ever seeing these guys. That poor zombie is not sure what's happening to him, though. So, did, I'm confused. Was Abra's, Abra's well, didn't have a video. No, Abra's not a video. This is just the, uh, the oh, okay. screenshot that they got. Gotcha, did. gotcha. Um, and then, okay, then I think last but not least, we've got uh, Rampage from Instagram uh, shared this this video of um, Winnie the Pooh trying to get out of his house <laughs> after eating too much honey. So yeah, he's just Ugh. he's just stuck in there. He's got to kick him in the belly. It's like that's what I look like when I. Eat tacos. Uh, same here. This is what I look like to eat tacos, too. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I saw what you did there. <laughs> thank you, Rampage, for sharing that video. And thank you, everybody, for all of the sharing that went on. And let's see here. Uh, okay. So let's, uh, let's go back into quiz mode and answer this question. So what is the Bounty Broker's full name? Uh, those of you who are paying attention know it's Cash Beaumont. Cash Money Beaumont, I did the like, mattress king of Charleston. I did like um, I did like Sailor's answer, which was Boss Hog. <laughs> it does look a lot like Boss Hog. Uh, so the winners uh, today are let's see here. So on YouTube, uh, Nizumi Fan uh, is going to get one of these beautiful lanyards. Um, on Twitch, Garlic Burp is going to get one of these beautiful lanyards. And on Mixer, uh, SN. Devils? SN Devils, I think, is going to get this. So uh, definitely get in contact uh, with our moderators. Uh, I think if, if they have trouble getting in, in contact with you, then uh, go uh, send an email to social at uh, undeadlabs.com, and, and they'll be able to hook you up. And if you are not one of those people, please don't try to trick us. That's mean. So anyway. Uh, congrats to the winners. Yeah, congrats to the winners. And we got five minutes left. Uh, let's. I can kind of look at... What other you know questions we can try to answer that have come in? Let's see here. 
<laughs> so, uh, Ritz1906 wants to know, will the fix to load times address zombie pop-in while in the game? No, those are two unrelated things. Totally uh, unrelated. Yeah, the, ini the initial lo load times are all about just sort of loading the entire map in at once at the very beginning. But then when you're running around and streaming, uh, you know, that's that's what causes things to pop into the game when you're sort of moving around the world. Because we can't we can't actually simulate every possible zombie that could be in the world uh, at any one time. Yeah. Instead we only sub we only simulate zombies in a bubble around you. And so if you're seeing zombies pop in, it's probably because you're getting ahead of that bubble and uh, you know, and so you know, we, we would love to, to continue to, to try to fix, you know, issues like that, remaining issues that, uh, that this that this update doesn't fix. We're, we've constantly got our eyes open for more it's things also we can the improve. Same, it, that's also the same reason why sometimes zombies are inside structures that you can't get to, like in under stairs and things like that. Oh, it's because the because zombie got spawned in before the world got the spawned in. The zombie got spawned in into the area it knew was available as a map, but didn't know was unavailable because a house hadn't loaded yet. So yeah. it's uh, it's kind of a pain in the bottom. Yeah, so we, we sometimes have to like manually place things in the world to tell the game that zombies cannot spawn here. And often that spawn doesn't in. work. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work, so yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a certain order in which some of the big systems can happen and sometimes the spawning doesn't. I will, I will. Hey. That's the plan. Stop jumping, stop jumping the gun, Aaron. Tell that. Come here. <laughs> Aaron's coming in and telling me to, to play the trailer. But Aaron's going to do what she does best. We're going to. Doves around. We're going to do it last. Can you play the trailer? Please? We're going to do it last. Now, now, now. You're going to sit now, on a monkey. We Why should do play you have it to be twice? now? Okay. Because okay. it's too awesome. You, you should play it twice. It's you super people. Awesome. We okay. should have just spent the entire time <laughs> on loop. Okay. You guys want to see the trailer for the Bounty Broker update? Yes. Here it comes. And that last bit where it says available now is a lie. It's a total lie. <laughs> it's not, well actually, if you're watching this on YouTube later, it's probably true because it's coming out so soon. Uh, but right this second while we're recording this, uh, it, it's a lie. It's not available right now, but it will be very, very soon in the near future. We'll watch that again too in just a second. That's one of our favorite things that Alan has ever made uh, over here. It's really, really cool. Alan is a big uh, 80s and 90s nostalgia enthusiast, and so I think it was probably, you know, his head was full of this, and it's been bulging, and he needed to get it out. And so uh, it's out there uh, on the screens for, the, for all of you to enjoy. Yes. And my favorite thing is that uh, the locations where it lists, you know, like, it's, you know, ca Cash is at three locations. Uh, those are all accurate. That's actually where Cash is in the world. Uh, Alan asked me, where is Cash? So that we can put him there, and so yeah. So let's my favorite one is the one we just showed next to the big rock. Oh yeah. So let's 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 look at this trailer again. New arrival, special financing, mass sales. The biggest selection anywhere. A van down by the river, behind that big rock, <laughs> and the hollow. <laughs> Or, oh, where are we? Oh, we're here. Hi. So, uh, yeah, it's it's 2.59, so time. it's probably time to go. Let's see if any last-minute questions came in here. Uh, so, uh, so Nozumi fan is, is comparing that trailer to Stranger Things. Uh, that is pretty much, uh, that, that, that kind of thing is the inspiration that, uh, yeah, they're Stranger going Stranger Things or the greatest show that's ever been showed, ever? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that show. Uh, my my daughter my daughter's really into eighties and nineties nostalgia, and so she's into it too, despite the fact that she's thirteen and doesn't have any idea what the eighties are actually like. Uh, but Stranger Things is there to tell her. So why don't we just watch that trailer one more time on our way out? I like it. That sounds great. Uh, before you start that, mm -hmm. thank you everyone from all of our streaming sources. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys continue to support us. This you know we're we're continuing to try to support you guys with uh, your requests and I'm I am so super excited about this particular content update because of all the things that we talked about today and the Cash Beaumont mm -hmm. and yeah so yeah cuz Cash sets us up to continue to add content to the game in a way that makes it really easy for you guys to find it and engage with it and earn it uh, and so that's going to be fun and then yeah and and you can see that you know 
we kind of have been given a new mandate to try to really uh, you know, provide for you guys the stuff that you've been asking for. And so we're gonna keep trying to do that. We got a lot of plans still in the hopper and very, very soon, you can get the Bounty Broker update. It's gonna be just any second now, we promise. Any second. So uh, let's, let's leave with the trailer. No, it's not available now, but very, very soon. <laughs> Stop lying! Unless you're watching YouTube, in which case, this is probably out already. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Very likely. Let's just say that. Yeah, very, maybe. It's freaking yeah. soon! Oh, it's, 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 it's already. It's already. For most of you listening to this.